Nicholas Kazemi, and I'm here with esteemed crime writer and all-around international bestseller, Val McDermott. So, first of all, you, you've been published now, officially, for 25 years. Yes, it's scary. Is it? Yeah, it is. I, when I started off, I thought I maybe had four or five books in me. Uh, I had no idea I would still be doing it and making a living at it 25 years later. When you started, though, you were writing for a specific feminist, a woman, the Women's Press, which is yeah. a feminist press, yeah. correct? And now you're as mainstream as mainstream goes. Yeah. Does that change what you're writing or what you're writing about? Not really. I mean, although my first three books featured a lesbian character as the main character, I was never, I don't think I was ever in my head writing lesbian fiction in the sense that I was never writing about the, the state of being a lesbian. I was writing books whose central character happened to be a lesbian, who lived a lesbian life, um, but who wasn't concerned solely with her identity as a lesbian. At the time that I wrote those books, it was only ever going to be possible to publish them in a feminist press. Um, and, you know, they are feminist novels. I'm not, you know, I'm no way denying their, their place in that, in that canon. You know, it was the first British lesbian detective, apparently. Um, but that was never going to be the only kind of stories I wanted to write. My books have almost always got gay characters in them um, because I like to, I mean, I, like, I live my life in a landscape that's, that's populated by all sorts of people. Um, and so I write about that world, I write about the world that I see. Um, some of my books have got a lot of gay and lesbian characters. I mean, standalone before this one, Trick of the Dark, is just chock full of lesbians. Um, remember that old uh, advert for the chocolate bar, you know, a hazelnut in every bite. Well, this has got a lesbian in every bite. Um, and. You know, there was never any doubt that my mainstream publisher was going to publish it. But do you think there is a lesbian ethos in your writing? Do you think there is that sort of embedded in your work somehow? Well, I think it, I think it informs my work because it's an important part of who I am. Mm -hmm. And the changes in that last 25 years, the changes we've gone through socially and politically, they're kind of embedded in my consciousness and my, my awareness of who I am. Um, but they're not the only part of myself. You know, my, my Scottishness, for example, is very important to me. Uh, and, and the political changes that have been going on in Scotland and continue to go on in Scotland is an important part of me. Being a parent is an important part of me. All of these things feed into what I write. So, you know, we're all multifaceted. None of us is a one-dimensional person. And I think, you know, I try to reflect in my writing that fact. You know, I don't write villains who are all bad um, or, or protagonists who are all good. Um, so that those shades of grey, those, 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 those different aspects of, of all of us. You know, obviously you're a lesbian and, and, and you have a partner. In fact, you're married, correct? I am married you're, to a Michigander. Uh, but you don't live in London, per se, or even in no. metropolitan city. No. You live no. where? We live in Northumberland on the northeast coast. Are there a lot of people there who are uh, queer identified? Are there gay and lesbians nearby? I mean, seriously. No, we're the only lesbians in the village at the moment, but actually there's two moving into a cottage across the street from us soon. Great. And that's <laughs> fine. You know, I, I have to say, there's, uh, even though we live in a small village of 400 people, I've never felt any whiff of homophobia. It's mm -hmm. been entirely welcoming and you know, open-handed. Everybody you know, knows that we're gay and there's no issues about it. Uh, but it's funny, I read a quote by you that said like maybe 10 or 12 years ago, if you were to propose you were a publisher, you know, a lesbian heroine or hero protagonist in a book, mm -hmm. you would be like, not a good idea. Yeah. Now? It's, that's changed very much. There seems to be a wave of lesbian authors. Like we can go through a whole whack of them right now, mm. of course, you know, like Ali Smith is an obvious one, Sarah Waters is another. Yeah. Jeanette Winterson, Jeanette Winterson, Jackie Kay, Carl Ann Duffy, Charlotte Mendelssohn, Stella Duffy. Yeah, we could go on forever. So it's extraordinary. Why do you think there's this wave? I think, I think it's something to do with the fact that the UK is a smaller country and therefore we reach critical mass more quickly. And because we had some writers coming through with the women's press and, and Virago in the 1980s and into the 90s, there started to be this kind of awareness of lesbian writing and that it was okay and you could get published by a proper publishing house. And so I think that made it possible. It kind of gives people permission. Once they see a few people doing it, it gives you permission to go ahead and, and follow that trend. And, and then you reach a sort of point where it's, it's impossible to ignore. Well, it's interesting because you write two different kinds of books. You have your series, Continuing Characters, and you have your standalone books in which The Vanishing Point is a standalone book. Um, and it begins with one of the most harrowing scenes um, I've ever read, and every parent dreads of this scene. So I have to ask you, where did this idea for this book come from? Well, the opening scene in the book uh, is based very strongly on, on something that happened to me 
when I was travelling with my son and I was coming through O'Hare Airport and because I have knee replacements I set the metal detectors off and it, uh, in O'Hare at the time until very recently uh, when they were waiting for a member of staff to be available to, to wand you and, and pat you down and indeed these days pat you up, um, they put you in this kind of perspex enclosure between the, the security um, belts with the, the luggage coming through but you're not allowed to take your kid in with you. So my boy is like about six, seven years old and he's standing over by where the luggage comes out the machine and I'm trapped in this perspex box. And because I have a nasty, devious, twisted mind, I immediately start thinking, well, what would happen if somebody walked up right now and took his hand and walked away with him? Uh, and that was the starting point, that what if. Well, I, one of the things that I'm always kind of struck by your work, because I think your prose is incredible, but you don't pull back from like, uh, not exploitive violence, but it's there, sometimes it's very, very, uh, it's disturbing. There are people sometimes, oh, you're a woman writing this stuff, or oh, you know, this is like, you know, this is not ladylike, or yeah, no, seriously. Because yes, yes, I mean, and people do, and, and it's one of the things that, is, that really, really annoys women writers to be told that somehow it's not appropriate for us to be dealing very directly with, with violence and what it is and what it does. One of the issues about women writing violence is that when we do it, we write it more scarily than men. And that, I think, comes from the way we're brought up from childhood. You know, as little girls, we're told the world is a dangerous place. We're told not to go down that dark alley by ourselves at midnight. All through our lives, we have to live with the potential of the awful things that could happen to us as women. We could be raped, we could be assaulted, we could be murdered. So we grow up playing those possibilities in our head. So every time you are on the streets on your own late at night, you're thinking, is that a footstep behind me? Am I going to be murdered here? Am I going to be raped? Am I going to be assaulted? Oh my God, what was that I just saw? And when men write that kind of scene, because they've not grown up with that mindset, they're not, they're not trained to think of themselves as victims, even though the reality is that they are the victims as often as women about these random acts of violence. But they don't think of themselves in that way. So they write it in much more from outside themselves, almost as a spectator. When women write about an act of violence, it's terrifying. It's genuinely disturbing. Yes. And, and this book is disturbing on a different scale, and an mm. emotional scale. But mm. it's, it's, as I have to say, like, the, it's, a, it's a page turner, like all your books. Good. And if, if one picks up The Vanishing Point, just a warning, your, your, your day is shot, because you will read it the whole day. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure, as always. Thank it's you. It's a delight. Thank you. Mm.